take out what uh subject is on sixty four what do you see as gonna be coming? Yeah, I was battling with Kale and then Comp did a good job just stay in the Sometimes those plays work. It doesn't work every time, but uh, it's tough for the goalie when the, he thinks the puck is going around the net and, and then it's coming back. So, so a good spot by Comp and uh, just found a way to get it there. For both of you guys, just overall thoughts about the comeback and the 4 1. Obviously, some would consider it an epic comeback in the very good team. Uh, yeah, I mean, not good enough in the first period for sure, but. Um, we're proud of the way we battled back um, throughout the lineup. Frankie coming in um, did a great job for us. Our top guys stepping up, um, you know, Mito, Landy, and Nate definitely led the way the second and third. And, um, you know, we're proud of that comeback and hopefully it keeps us going. When did you make the goaltending change at that point? Was that an attempt to send a message to everybody or is it just about the goal? No, I think it's for the team. You know, I don't, I don't know if Camp could have done anything with those goals you know we were we had a bad first period we were lazy and uh, we were not skating and they were creating a lot of chances so so I think it's most mostly for the for the other than the goal you know for the players just to kind of wake up and and a little just a wake up call I think yeah I agree I mean I don't think we're blaming camps for that first period that was on us um, not good enough throughout the lineup and uh, yeah and then Frankie comes in and does a great job you're trailing 3-0 against a team that got three goals on you a month ago. Is that any kind of does that that at any time probably come into your mind when you're trailing 3-0 that this is a team that scored a lot of goals and you're also like a set of five goals, or is it just another three goals and maybe that'll come back later? We talked about it before the game that what happened in Toronto and we wanted to do a little payback and we didn't start the right way, but I think the three goals gave us even more more anger to come back and show that it's it's not over and we're not losing that easy because it was our last game of the regular season against these guys and like you said they're a really good team and and uh, but so are we and uh, I think we showed it in the last two. Nico, you mentioned payback. Is that a, a good example of how confident this team is? Yeah, it's it's tells about the character of the team. I think you know we don't have to like we're up, we're down three. We know we can score and. Sometimes it's our defensive habits, and and uh, when we clear those, uh, like we did last two periods, uh, we didn't we didn't give up a lot, and and uh, we know we can score, and uh, as well as you know uh, create chances. So so uh, we just have to keep working. Yeah, it was a long time coming for him. You know, kind of feel bad. He had some really bad luck in the past year, so. So it was really nice to see him there, and he was doing some un unreal saves and keeping us in the in the game when it was four one and and even four two, you know. So uh, just a great game from him, and good to see him back there. Uh, I mean, uh, I just decided to take it. Uh, you know, minute by minute, and uh, I felt like we really changed our game since I stepped in as a team. And uh, so most of the time, I was just watching our team playing in their zone, having a great hockey game. Yeah, um, you know, we went for a change. I think they had one or two bodies still out that was that were a little tired there. And uh, you know, Nas pop middle. We're trying to keep possession as much as we can with the guys we got on the ice and. Uh, Nas pop middle there, and uh, I think they cheated it a little bit, so I was able to jump down, and uh, the demon kind of slid over to Miko and gave me some room. How much of a difference does it make at the end of those, uh, at the end of the first and second, you know, get one late, you lose game two. How much of that just kind of helps like the game isn't around anymore? Yeah, I think you know those games can get out of hand. I think when we were in Toronto, that was one of those games that got out of hand. I think we scored one late. I think in the first of that game and make it three one and. Uh, they came out right away and kept scoring, and you know we couldn't catch up. But we're a resilient group in there, and, and Frankie coming in, he, we were still a little shaky when he came in. He made some big saves for us and kind of gave us a little bit of time to get our feet going and, and find our work ethic. And uh, you know we found it there early in the second. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, our forecheck wasn't going. They were breaking pucks out easy on us. And, uh, you know, we know how dangerous they are into the slot. And, you know, they got snipers on their team. And we were giving them a little bit too much room to, to roam around our zone. Uh, we weren't moving our feet to close. And uh, we had no support, too, when we were trying to close. So those were kind of the two areas that we were trying to focus on. No, I think we've proven that we can score goals. Um, you know, goalies, there's good goalies in this league, great goalies in this league, and he made a heck of a save on me. And uh, he made a lot, of, a lot of really nice saves tonight uh, to keep them in it and keep them ahead. And, you know, we, we just put our foot down and, and stayed with it, and it worked out for us. At what point did your goaltender too low well for Chicago? Were you surprised when you, when you pulled him and ran and when you were coming in? And what message does it send as a whole team in this situation? Uh, I mean, uh, I think it's something coaches usually use to kind of, you know, get the team going. Sometimes it works, sometimes not, but uh, it obviously worked for us today because, as I mentioned before, uh, we really, really started playing well in second period, and uh, it was just, to me, it was just a matter of time until we scored a couple goals and possibly tie it or win the game. Yeah, and, and Kemp, Kemp's made a few huge saves in that first period for us. You know, that could have easily been four, five, six, nothing. Um, he kept us in that game. And, you know, I think, like Frankie said, it was just a little bit of a spark to us to get going. I don't think it was anything on Kemp's. I thought he played well. And, you know, we weren't good in front of him. That, that was just the name of the game in the first period. We were just not good in front of him. Um, you know, we made that change, and Frankie came in hit big for us. John, what, what's said to some of the players when that change was made? Like, you know, you said it's nice to get the from the team. Not much. I think we just know we got to get to our game, and um, that's just kind of a reset time, you know, minute or two to change a goalie there, and guys to realize like we got to get going. And uh, we did eventually. It did take us a little bit of time. Like I said, Kemp's made some big saves, keep us in, and Frankie did too. And uh, you know, we were a little slow out of the gates, and you know, second, third period, you can see what kind of team we are. I mean, it's it's obviously better. Or if we, uh, you know, lose, you know, by a couple more goals. But uh, I was just trying to, you know, like after this such a long time, I was just trying to enjoy every minute on the ice, especially a uh, game like this when it's, it's possibly uh, two most talented teams in the league and a great crowd. It was it was it was buzzing today, so it was a great hockey night. John, uh, Nico was in here earlier, and he was talking about payback from December 1st. I'm curious if that just speaks to the confidence of this group. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talked about it briefly, and, um, you know, I think it was in our heads that, you know, we let that game get out of hand. It shouldn't have been an 8-3 game, and uh, we embarrassed our team, our goalie in that game, and, uh, you know, we left him out to dry, and uh, it just, it's a testament to our team and our work ethic, and, you know, when we put our put, put our foot down and work and, and get to our game, we can be so lethal, and it's, it's all about commitment from the whole lineup, you know, four lines, 60, and both our goalies like we needed tonight, so... Uh, for us, it's just commitment to our game. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Person? What message were you sending or who were you sending when you said we just we just got it right? Sending it to our whole team. Yeah, I mean, first period, I mean, my take on it was we were getting out work badly, badly. They were really competitive and on pucks with second and third effort, especially from the tops of our circles down. And um, they're a real dangerous team on the cycle. I think it's one or number one or number two in the league on the down low cycle and finding the slot. I think they get the second most uh, scoring chances from the low slot or first amount from the low slot. And that's exactly how they beat us there. So we were... I thought we were prepared for that um, going into the game, but we just couldn't handle their, like physically one-on-one, -on -one. we were just weren't handling the, the down low pressure. And to me, that was work and competitiveness and they were lighting us up. So 
that point, like we needed to change something. So I, I don't put that on Kemp's at all. Um, I love to see him come up with one of those, you know, make a big save and, and we've seen him do that in the past, but he just wasn't, wasn't finding it. And we were continuing to give up too many chances. So I, I would just trying to send a message to our group. And then we talked after the first and then, you know what we got, we got, we, even though we gave up some good scoring chances, even in the second period, we got way more competitive in the offensive zone. In the second period, we jumped, we shook up our lines, and we went to work. And I think, we, you know, by the end of the game, we kind of had them on their heels a little bit. And um, I mean, we were pushing to try and tie the game and, and win the game. And it could, just shows you what our team's capable of, capable of if we if we work like that on in both ends of the rink. I thought he was great. Yep, I thought he was great. Um, lost the net once in the second period there where I was like, where is he going? <laughs> you know, like the net was just complete because he's a little rusty, hasn't been in. And then, um, you know, I thought he really settled in. He did a nice job. He battled down low. He found pucks and froze pucks for us when we needed him to be frozen. They had a couple uh, strong pushes even in the third. And, um but I thought he was I thought he was really good, especially coming in cold, you know, and he skated this morning and did some work this morning for a five o'clock game trying to get ready for uh Seattle and um yeah. He I knew he'd be warm because I saw him all day today and I, you know, most of our team wasn't here till right before the game. The last couple of playoff runs, a lot of the narrative has been that you know, your team has struggled to adjust to different play styles. You look back at this the stretch, you know, starting early in November. You guys are winning all types of different games and, and creating comebacks and getting the points in front. What's been the difference this year, and has there really been any conversation around that? Well, there's conversation around that every day, every game you play, because especially when you're playing a different opponent because they all have their strengths and we have numbers to back it up from the analytics. So they, you know, I watch all the video and we get through it all and then we pick out, you only have so much time. You can't go over everything. So you're picking out the key components of, of your opponent's game. And like I said, tonight, that's their download cycle. Like we haven't run into a team that it, now, Winnipeg is a good team at that, too. So it, it was, there's a lot of similarities between Winnipeg and, and Toronto. So uh, last game was a little bit of a warm-up for us for tonight, you know. And um, so we had gone over some things which made the meetings easier. Everyone understood it. And, I mean, we got way better at defending them down low in our zone. And they're going to spend some time there because they can move and they can hang on to pucks and they'll challenge you one-on-one. -on -one. But we got much better in the second and third. And it and it showed, you know, we didn't give up as many chances and not as many chances in the slot, even though we did have some um, that we gave up that I didn't like. And then you run into teams that, that are just going to pound pucks from the points. That's not them, you know. So there's all – and then they go to the net hard and they're, they're just waiting at the net for you and they battle you in the crease. And Toronto has a little bit of that in their game. Like they're they're hard in front of the net and they, they strip pucks all over the place. So there's different things you have to adjust to. But the difference is for me is that we have to identify that information and the players have to buy into it immediately. It can't take two, three games to to – find solutions to what other teams are doing. You have to do it immediately. And we've done a nice job over that in 10 games. Like you can hear guys like Lambie on the bench. He'll say, that's what, you know, that's what we're talking about. That's, you got to be better there. And like, he'll be, they'll be holding court on the bench as a group and holding each other accountable for things that we just brought up in pregame meeting, you know? So that's the evolution of our team. You got to fix it now. You can't, you can't wait or it's going to be too late. Because he's huge, he can move, and he has skill. So he can play with guys. He's comfortable with guys on his back, has always been, you know. He's got more sturdy over the years. So when he has the puck and someone's checking him and he knows that, well, he's even though he's leaning on him here, he's long enough and strong enough to be able to still – hang on to the puck and get his eyes up and check option one. If it's not there, he's a good enough player to make sure he checks option two. And if that's not there, sometimes he's finding option three or option four. 
he had other options on that play where he spun around and found Landy, but he knew he was there. I saw him look to the net front when he was coming out, and, and that's on his forehand, and then he spins around on his backhand and makes a play, and he's equally as good going the other direction on his backhand. So if he doesn't like what he sees, he's big and strong and can protect it himself. But there's not – it takes an elite player when you're playing against elite defenders, which they have, that they're top guys that he's playing against – to be able to check options and decide which one you're going to make or keep going a little bit to open up the seam with guys trying to check you. That's what they did to us in the first period. Guys like Tavares, Matthews, like they were, they had their heads up making plays and driving it into the slot with, with us on their back, you know? So that just meant that for me, like you can't change your whole system playing a just because you're playing a different opponent. You have to be harder in those areas and make sure they can't get into that ice. Yeah, yeah. I know Prater talked to him previous or prior to the overtime because um, last couple overtimes we 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 got our D too tight to the crowd and didn't give them enough room, give our forwards enough room to work up, and we turned one over and they scored on it. Last game, we almost got caught with it, and uh, I think we ended up winning that one. Um, and tonight, he was so patient. He just he got the puck up top. He waits all the way out there, drags him out, makes them, makes them expand, and then he jumps by him. It was a great read. He dishes the puck to a guy on his forehand, which is a key, and then he jumps by him, and then walking it in, you can get it in that area. you got to shoot it. We had two really good shots just prior to that, I think, too, that uh, Campbell made big saves on. So... Um, that was a real smart play, intelligent play. Yeah. I don't think the players do. No. And and generally, I don't either. Like I think if you put enough enough heat and get the right chances on a goalie, then you're gonna you can beat them. You know, if you're if you're shooting the puck well. But I was starting to wonder, like when you watch goalies make repetitive saves, you're starting to wonder, well, what do you got to do? You know, like I thought I felt that way a little bit last year in the playoff series against Vegas. Like we were getting game five and six or four, even four or five and six. Like you start looking at the scoring chances you create and they're the same as they're as good as all the ones you created all year. And you're getting one goal. You're like, we got to do we got to find a way to make it tougher on this guy getting his and generally that's traffic and guys on the side of the net and, and, and coming up with rebounds and screens and tips. But I thought Campbell made some, I mean, second period when I mean, we were on a put, we were on a push, right? And even early in the third, he made some big saves when when we were trying to come back. And then it, it felt like after Landy got that one on the rebound that trickled across the line, then then you know we were able to kind of keep putting some heat on him and found a way to get the winner. Yeah, <laughs> well, I was starting to wonder if we were going to be able to beat him because at that point I felt like we were starting to get some traction in the game and we were creating what we wanted to create. And there'll be games when, you, when you're able to do it like tonight and there'll be others where, you know, you'll create enough and, and you, you, you just won't capitalize on them. It just is what it is. That's hockey. Come on. Uh, obvious, uh, step up from the first to second, the second to third from your team. Do you change in the locker room there, or is that mostly the, the guys are all bending to you and, and kind of running to them? Well, I had lots to say after the first, and then I liked their second. So, I mean, what else am I going to say? After the second, I went in and said, listen, that's – like, we, we got the competitive juices going in the second. I mean, I got – I'm looking at uh, the Kubel, Kadri, and Comfort line. I flipped it to that line in the second. They were good. Like Kubel was hard on pucks and physical. And we were turning pucks over in their whole team. I think they had the first really good shift in the second. And our team started like, you know, you could see it. Like we were, we were hungrier. And that's a hunger you gotta, you gotta try and play with. You know, 60 minutes a night. I don't know how realistic it is, but it would have been eight three again if, if we hadn't cranked up our uh, 
our competitive spirit and and we did and we came from guys that we you know it has to come from more than just our top line you know so i gave him kudos after the second said stay with it that's all I, don't, I didn't feel like we needed to change anything from the second to the third you know we just needed to keep working and capitalize on a chance or two someone had to make a play so mike could you speak on your environment how you deal with the water and things like that out there i mean it's modern obviously but yeah not being straight laid in your bill it, it just seemed like the team style the environment in general i thought it was awesome yeah i mean um you know, Joe even said, I mean, if you're just coming to watch our team or those two teams for the first time or hockey in general and you watch that game, you're you're going to be hooked and coming back. That was an exciting game. I mean, there were the then the stars showed up like uh, Matthews, like we couldn't do anything against him in the first period. It was like a man against boys. And then, you know, our guys got going. It was and it was similar at the other end, you know, like it was a, a it was a really good hockey game, really good hockey game. A sight, exciting game to be part of, and I'm and I'm sure the fans enjoyed it. It was it was a good game. Right, thank you, guys. Yep, thanks, guys.